Ho, 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 green giant. Sorry. Every time I think about green beans coming to Farming Simulator, I think of canned beans and the infamous green giant ads. Did I just show my age? By the way, if you ever find yourself in the Blue Earth, Minnesota, then swing by the Jolly Green Giant Museum and check out not only the 60-foot statue, but the largest collection of green giant memorabilia and the history of the canning factory in Blue Earth. Link in the description. While we do not know much about the productions that are sure to be coming with spinach, peas, and green beans, we do learn more today about green beans making long grain rice and regular rice the only new crops still shrouded in a bit of mystery. Over the last few weeks, I'm starting to wonder if we should be calling Farming Simulator 25 the Oxbow Edition because we learned today about the new Oxbow BP2140E Green Bean Picker. Just like with the pea harvester last week, the unit does not just specialize in green beans or beans in general, but also lists sugar peas on its brochure linked in the description below. If you're like me and you are intrigued and amazed by the design and engineering that goes into these large scale specialty harvesters, then today's your lucky day because we're not looking at just a nice set of screen grabs, but let's dive into the machine and its inner workings. From this internal drawing, we can see that it all starts with the intake header with this intake conveyor. Working to bring the plant into the machine. From there, we see things go under the front cover and now we're a bit obscured from view. Just under the front cover, we have the initial stripping of fine and coarse materials. The picking height control floats the header on the ground to assure a nice and even harvesting height of the plant. Once the plant has been cut, it is transported back into the main body of the harvester via the first incline conveyor, numbered four on this diagram. Stage five introduces an optional component to aid in the removal of plant vine and seed pod. The BP2140E uses suction to then lift away the lighter materials like vines and leaves, allowing the heavier seed pod to fall onto the second incline conveyor listed here as step seven. On their way back up toward the top of the machine, the seed pods and other plant material have a second optional vine and removal stage before things move through an additional set of belts and suction areas to lift away more undesirable materials. Lastly, the cleaned bean pods are transported up the fourth incline conveyor belt, labeled 14 on this diagram, where they are then offloaded into the storage hopper 15. Something else that we will need to see on November 12th when the game releases is if FS25 version of the BP2140E has crab walk because the real unit, as we can see here, does. A question I have for you is in your gameplay, have you ever used the crab walk feature on sugar beet harvesters? I know I haven't. Maybe we'll see a set of Oxbow fact sheets tomorrow but just in case, let's run down the speeds and feeds like we did last week. Just like the pea harvester, the BP2140E makes use of the Scantia DC09 inline 5 cylinder 9.3 liter diesel engine capable of outputting 315 horsepower. Using the same hydrostatic drive, the harvester has a mad road speed of 15 miles per hour. The unit is also configured with four wheel steer, but only when it is off the road surface. In road mode, the unit has rear steer only. Having a total weight of 20 tons, this harvester can hold 15,000 liters of freshly picked green beans. Now maybe we have a cart before the horse and should rewind a bit to spring because that's when it all gets started. Farmers will hit the fields planting their green beans between the months of April and June, at which time they'll have four months to fill their time with other tasks before moving on to harvest prep in August to November timeframe. Seed usage will be fairly light at 280 liters per hectare and a max yield if all other steps are taken of just under 14,000 liters. Those playing on easy economy will find an average selling price of $2,160 per 1,000 hectares, which is no surprise to anyone and that's an average revenue of around $30,000 per hectare. If I recall correctly, that was the figure I gave you for peas and spinach. Do you ever get the idea that Giants maybe has the game a bit too balanced from the standpoint of crop productivity? Do you want to plant spinach, peas, or green beans? Does it really matter? 
They all require specialized, expensive harvesters, and none are overly more profitable than the other. I suspect when other information comes to light, post-release on November 12th, we'll see that just about all the crops are going to land in that same general revenue per hectare range. For those farmers who have everything ready to go in April, your bean field should look something like this come May with the first growth date coming in. Now the one thing that stands out to me in this image is look at that rich dark soil. June comes and we find our green bean plants thriving in the Arkansas sun. And while you may want your corn to be knee high come mid July, your green beans are going to be out in full bloom ready for those bees to do their thing. And if it all goes well by August, you're not just getting your kids ready to go back to school, but you're making plans to hit the fields because it's harvest time for those bean pods that are now fully filled out. The only thing we are missing here is the chaff that would have come off of the harvester, but we can see here that the plant has been fully stripped from the field, aside from a few low stringers. Lastly, you don't want to have time to get away from you because if you do, then your family will probably look as sad as these withered green beans do. Oxbow for spinach, peas, and green beans. Will there be other harvest options aside from these behemoths? Will first generation farmers have any chance of breaking into big scale veg farming? What productions will come along with these new crops? Inquiring minds want to know. Hopefully one of the upcoming blog posts will focus on new productions coming to Farming Simulator 25 on November 12th. Maybe you're feeling a bit nostalgic about the idea of picking green beans in the garden growing up or thinking about how you'll never relive those days and the idea of sitting in a big cab of the Oxbow BP2140E brings a smile to your face, then why not pre-order Farming Simulator 25? Console players and those on PC looking to pick up a physical copy of the game or the collector's edition with all of those cool things that come with it, I have an Amazon affiliate link in the video's description. Players on PC that are fine with keeping up with their own install codes and install files and looking to be one of the first players to have access to Farming Simulator 25 on November 12th, then consider using my eShop affiliate link also in the video's description. The link is tied to my partner code FarmerKline and as such will help move us closer to becoming a gold partner with Giants. Now those of you that have made it this far surely have liked the video, so why not tell YouTube that others with similar viewing habits will probably like it as well, and click that like button. Lastly, YouTube's analytics tell me that a large percentage of those of you who view my news videos are not subscribers. Why not become part of the minority and click that subscribe button? It sure will go a long way in helping us achieve our goal of reaching 50,000 subs for the release of Farming Simulator. Now come back tomorrow for our fourth installment of the fact sheets where hopefully even more will be revealed about the machines and tools that we have an opportunity to use very, very soon. And next week, it's going to be exciting because we get our first looks at the new Asian inspired map which is going to be revealed at the Tokyo Game Show. Until next time, happy farming.